Welcome, everybody, to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host, Jinx. And uh, as always, joined by some of the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem, uh, I will hand off to Fred for today's uh, protocol and first gateway update. Sounds good. All right, let me pull up my uh, list of updates here. All right, uh, starting with Shannon, um, we are in kind of the this week's goal is permissionless load testing. Um, there are quite a few topics listed here, but I'll just hit the highlights. So minimum staking values uh, have rema remaining utility work, PNF funding accounts, which is technical debt, integration and end-to-end -end testing is continued work, relay mining multiplier is in progress, both from a development and design standpoint, uh, stake-weighted rewards are, are in, uh, have a PR, but are waiting for review but um, also might be looking down the barrel of a rewrite based on uh, the, the existing code. Uh, the Shannon Transaction Builder, and if time, a stretch goal is out there for probabilistic proofs and the documentation thereof. Um, moving on from Shannon, uh, on the path front, uh, really this week, um, we are kind of racing towards parity with the, uh, the Gateway Kit. Um, the main goal this week is shipping embedded QoS, uh, but also evaluating what's left um, to reach that parity point. And uh, from there, we'll kind of enter into our alpha state of path. Mm -hmm. Lastly, on kind of the portal, um, we are doing a bunch of prep work on the existing infrastructure for the portal to prepare it to migrate over to path. Uh, this includes we will be migrating out of Terraform and uh, moving our entire infrastructure instead to use uh, GCS, which is a uh, Google uh, container service. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the highlights from the Grove, man. Excellent. And uh, anybody else on here for gateway updates? I don't see some of the other folks. Okay, well, a question then, Fred, on that in regards to stake weighting. Uh, is the expectation that we, well, I guess let me rephrase this a little bit. I've heard in the past that we were potentially examining whether stake weighting uh, should continue uh, in Shannon. Is there any thought you can share about that? Um, it's my understanding that this feature will probably be carried forward, but I can't speak to any launch parameters or kind of the state of the code that uh, and where that's at. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, we've got a wide open floor with not a lot of folks uh, currently here. So if you'd have something you'd like to bring up for discussion, then now's the time. Long silences. People say uncomfortable silence, but I'm not uncomfortable with them at all. Uh, can you explain the Governor Dow stuff? So I assume all these people are coming into the den because they're getting paid a few bucks uh, to do do a bunch of uh, missions. Um, can someone give us a bit more in insight into why that's happening? Well, actually, it's a good partnership. Why that's beneficial to us? Uh, what's happening? What's the goal with that? That's, I guess, to Jinx or to Art, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's to me. Um, sure. So uh, the founder of Governor Down used to be a connection of ours at a company called Credo 
or QREDO. And I feel like the, I don't remember the specifics of what happened there, but something in that company, either they fell apart or the strategy shifted, but um, you know, that, that team has changed and the focus has changed. And I kept in touch with, um, forgot their specific role. I think it was a chief compliance officer there. Um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, here, here. Here's the full story. Just cause you know, stories are fun. Um, Ben Whitby was a chief compliance officer at Credo, and I was talking to him because we were exploring um, enterprise compliances like ISO 27001 and SOC 2, Type 1 and Type 2, and a few other things. And we just got into a good relationship, and we were chatting over the course of a year or more. And um, when things changed there, he went to go focus on uh, Bitcoin DeFi, which is something I'm also interested in. We've been chatting back and forth. And I, I became an advisor on that project um, and basically I've been looking through their pitch deck and what they're trying to do. So they basically have an interesting solution for a bridgeless token swap um, paradigm with a token in between that has a hard cap. Um, and they wanted to build on a full, you know, from a thesis standpoint, they wanted to build on a full decentralized stack. And the decentralized stack will include, I think, lit protocol, pockets, something with carbon DeFi and a few others and the point is that they want to enable cross-chain swaps um so they want to use pocket for cross-chain relaying um so that's basically where it comes through um so they in their marketing promotions they are working i get i don't even know how to pronounce it let's just call it galaxy so galaxy is one of these platforms that allows you to do a bunch of quizzes requests to get points and the points can then be converted to who knows what, but it has a way of tracking everything through, um, you know, purchasing tokens on various platforms and signing up and on Telegram or signing up on Twitter. Um, so the idea here was that given that we are kind of like a early partner to them um, as they build out their um, their flagship product, um, they wanted to promote all those partners. Um, so they created these Galaxy Quests and they've done a couple already and Pocket was the next one in. Um, so that, that's kind of where that stands. The product that they're building is called Just Pay and it's the front end that should enable these cross-chain swaps. This is like a long tail thing. I don't know how successful it's going to be. Obviously, I hope it is. But they want to use us under the hood because they had a good experience with us in the past. Um, so that's basically where that is all coming from. I mean, it's nice to see that the Telegram membership is, you know, increased significantly. I don't know how many of those people are real. It looks like a bunch of Vietnamese accounts joined overnight or were yeah. let in. So, but yeah, if it's a numbers game, it looks great. Nice. nice. Yeah, thanks for explaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have other partnerships in the works. Like like I said, I forgot who was asking uh, in the chat, but like Jinx and I basically talk on the daily, and uh, him and Fred and I have either been on a bunch of different calls with partners we have yet to announce or things that we're working on. There's some are pretty big. It's just you know this stuff takes forever. Um, some stuff has been in the works for like eighteen months. That I mean that's how long it takes. The Google thing was in works for at least nine months, um, and that you know there should be a launch there hopefully in early November. Um, but that that's on Fred's domain. Uh, yeah, yeah, just kind of moving. Yeah, I would uh, think I would have liked to have seen a little more of that traffic head into more uh, productive uh, channels. But sure, nice to see my channel numbers go up. Other questions, thoughts, topics, comments, complaints? Anybody on this call want to give their thoughts on Gandalf in general? I know there have been a number of chatters about that. Um, I personally would like to see Gandalf move forward to the end state, but I might be in the minority. 
Noted. I'd be curious to hear from any of the node runners on the call if it's been good, bad, and different for uh, for node running earnings. Breezy says it's been the same. Cheaper, obviously. Yeah, I would expect so. Is Gandalf's problem not just an economics issue that just is just aligning incentives to run these uh, long tail chains? Is that just is that is that the is that the way we solve the Gandalf issue? Um, yes or no? And you know, are, are, is people working on that? Or should we work on that? Or sort of what's happening with Gandalf? Yeah. So I mean, uh, it, it, to sync chat because I think that's an important contribution to this particular question. Uh, Miss Kitty says, as an indie node runner, Gandalf has made life easier, way fewer chains to keep track of, and running fewer chains does lower overhead a bit. Sure. Um, but Breezy gets to the heart of it. The only issue right now is that node runners are not keeping track of the node counts for chains, so there is a lot of chain swapping. Exactly right. Um, coordinating on making sure there's enough support for all the chains when you're reducing the chains per pocket node um, is certainly one of the larger coordination challenges and stepping down to the one-to-one. -one. The, the idea for long tail nodes is that uh, smaller traffic chains, new chains, things along that line can connect a pocket node to their already existing chain node. And that's ultimately the end goal. And, and, you know, I think solves all of those problems because if new chains are coming in and running their own pocket node to provide support uh, against the chain node they already have, then, I mean, that's, that is a, an ideal, that's best case scenario. Um, um, Romero says minimum stake per chain is supported by our free optimizer. That's uh, a reasonable tool. Uh, Breezy says it'd be nice if PocketScan can give a warning next to a chain in the chains tab that it's over-provisioned. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, although I wonder what metrics over-provisioned would be measured by, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would make for a good, uh, you know, uh, rule set for that. Under-provisioned might be a little more doable from a, from a, a general like network architecture perspective if we don't have enough chain nodes to support sessions then that's clearly a problem that needs to be resolved asap uh zatar says if everyone agrees that gandalf should be adopted in full doesn't it make sense to do it now in a coordinated fashion rather than wait till shannon when we'll be busy with many other new issues i don't think that there was a desire to wait till shannon um it was being stepped down over time to allow for the new distribution of chain nodes to be worked out with each step. Um, that's that's not at all something that is reliant on Shannon um, in its timeline. Coordinated fashion is doing a lot of lifting there. It certainly is, yes. <laughs> Uh, Ramiro, do you want to talk about the uh, minimum stake per chain um, and your optimizer and how that might help? Sure. Uh, in the optimizer that we put out for node runners, you can simply set a minimum amount of nodes that you want to stake in a given chain. So if you have your process automated of first staking, but you also want to keep a minimum amount of nodes in the long tail of chains. You just need to set the 24 there. I don't remember exactly how 
we use on the parameter, but it's probably a, a adjacent with the ID of the chain and the number of nodes, the minimum number of nodes that you want to keep there. And that's it. The rest of your nodes will be optimized to, to achieve the best distribution of nodes. So if everyone's using two, it should be easy. But I think that the actual solution to this is that PNF making sure that some node runners are supporting some chains and some other node runners are supporting other chains and all of the small chains that we care to keep are provisioned. And, and I think that's it. Any questions about that? Uh, Jinx, I guess they can, they can use the same formula being used by their migration tool. Um, okay. Um, I don't have any insight into that or understand how that might be applicable. Uh, Fred or Art, any insight there? I don't, and I'm not sure what's meant by the comment, Breezy, either. Are you saying node runners can use the same formula, or like the foundation, or Grove, or gateways, or I'm not sure who they is. I'm referring to pocket scan they have a tool to assist with the gandalf migration yeah i think that's what Murmiro was talking about if he's referring to adding some signal in the site showing which change over provision i guess we can um but the problem is how many nodes you have it, it's depending if you have one node yeah, we can signal which chain is over provisioned and which not, and you can just put your node there. And that's it, because your node won't change the network landscape. But if you have 600 nodes, like many of the node runners here, and you move all your nodes to this chain, you turn that, you unbalance once again the system. So that chain will become over provisioned, and maybe the, the chain that you take your nodes out, will become under provision. So it's not a simple problem if you have lots of nodes. Uh, and that's why we have a tool. OK, gone. Does that answer the question, Breezy? Okay. If, I, other... if you look at just a comment. No, Sorry. go ahead. If you look at the average turn per net per chain on pocket scan, you get the proxy of that value because higher averages mean that there are lots of relays and very few nodes. So if you have a few nodes, you can just put your nodes in the higher average in the chain out there and that's it. Also, regarding to not having enough nodes, I think that Mike 
once told that he wanted to lower the the stake amount, and then I think that that should help because you can break up a node into many nodes and put those in the smaller chains, and you don't have to stake a lot of poker to put there. That would help to ease the transition, in my opinion. I tend to agree. There's that that's a lever I think that's worth exploring in, in conjunction with the Gandalf lever. I also think another lever is the minimum number of nodes per session. Would be an interesting lever. I don't know which of these params, if any, are consensus breaking though. And I would I tend to be of the opinion that we should be avoiding any consensus breaking changes prior to Shannon. Yeah, I'd agree on that. And I don't really personally see the benefit to lowering node stake when more than two thirds of circulating supply or supply is circulating. Uh, there's plenty of pocket out there. It doesn't need to be lowered, in my opinion. Hell, raise it, make it 100K. That'll clear some out of the market. I think the calculation that we need to do this is this is you know for for i should say that i agree with you in principle jinx but the practical piece is that there's a minimum amount of nodes that we require and there's a specific set of chains that we support and our rule of thumb at grove is to at least have 30 nodes instead of 24 mm -hmm. i don't even know if that really matters because the way nodes are staked they're basically on the same machine if you go with the same provider, so the machine goes down, everything goes down, all the processes. Yep. Uh, but, um, you know, there's, I think, a whole slew of things that we can do. I think we just need to, you know, math it out, which is which chains do we want to support? Fred and I have kind of been discussing uh, a move to archival only chains. Um, so we just lower the, the total number of chain IDs mm -hmm. that are actually supported um, and then just move completely to, you know, you know, let's just say half the chains that currently exist will be supported because we'll just reduce, we'll remove all the mainnet versions. So there's less chains to support, which means that we need less total um, pocket nodes to support them, which means we can most likely just keep the current distribution. My worry is if we continuously want to add chains, we don't change the stake and we don't change the session limit from 24 to be smaller, which we can't really do. Without, I think, a consensus making a consensus breaking change, that we might get to a point where we might not be able to form a session. Um, so this like, is a mixture of like minimum nodes, Matt, what, what kind of chains we want to support, how much tokens do we want to lock up, and the UX layer. Like, how do we actually notify teams when no chains that we're specifically still wanting to keep around are falling below the threshold to form a session? This is the issue that we had when Gandalf happened, right? We had three straight weeks of like chains that have never had issues start throwing up issues and affecting the business. Is so there any downside this, to lowering to 10 chain nodes to make sure that that's more supportable? Or I, lowering to 10 nodes in session, I mean? I think when, I, and I don't know if I'll chance, I don't think he's on the call, um, but I recall him saying this is a, I think was a consensus breaking change, but I don't remember anymore. Um, so that, that was, that was the issue. And I think we were discussing actually just setting it to one just to go all the way down. Um, right. So I think the ideal state is you get a, all the nodes should become, you know, as, as a, as a gateway, our ideal state is you, we have a voluminous amount of nodes available to us and we have, and we choose from that. So if, we were to just query the entire network, we would want to get all the nodes. And then within whatever the rules are on the network of how many relays you can service per session, we would send as many there and then go to the next best node, the next best node, the next best node, and so on. So I don't know. I think there's some, you know, I think the ideal state might be a little difficult to reach right now, but I think it is like Gandalf to one, only archival chains, some level of minimum stake with stake waiting still in place. Some adjustment to like the numbers between servicers and validators and the reward that they get, 
um, uh, minimum session to one, but like, I don't think all of that can happen right now. So my hesitation on fidgeting with numbers is, can we change a number that doesn't require consensus breaking change that still does, doesn't, doesn't hurt the node runners, but also does increase quality for at the gateway level. The, the, the not instead of taking it away. So I don't know what the answer is there. I mean, this is something we can, it's a multidimensional math problem is what it comes down to. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, it's, you know, to, to me, I know that like we used to be at 10, 10 nodes per session, right? Um, so like that doesn't, I think that there's, there's uh, some, some reasonable um, arguments to be made about returning to some earlier values in places where it, uh, yeah, we began with five. That's right. Um, I, I think that it's worth retesting some of the, the previous parameters that we've had now that so many other changes have occurred within the architecture. Um, there, there are some things that I think might incentivize better behavior and might make coordination easier. And when it comes to token syncing, you know, uh, I, I don't think there's any reason at all to reduce token stake, given that the expected behavior of that would be uh, reducing total nodes, <laughs> no total node or total pocket stake to, in the network. Um, there, you know, again, there's plenty of pocket out there. And we've seen in the past that some uh, node runners, when stake waiting occurred, like, it wasn't enough of an incentive for them to actually cause a, a productive and positive change in the network. Um, node runners typically tend to, uh, uh, with with love to all of you and, and much respect, uh, node runners tend to take the easiest path and status quo uh, uh, is often the easiest path. Um, and if they can, um, you know, if they're not incentivized strongly to make a change, I don't really see uh, based on historical activity within the network, them leaning into that change. Um, and that also, you know, sort of manifests in this uh, coordination around the Gandalf things. Um, there was not, you know, there could have been a lot more proactive coordination among node runners aside from the, um, the, the normal faces that we see always participating in the conversations and the ones that we never see for that matter as well. Uh, Ramiro said that given that most nodes are at 60K, I doubt that the total pocket locked is due to the minimum stake. Most uh, seem to be there because they want to be staked. Um, agreed, but it took a long time to get to that most nodes are at 60K. Several notable node runners never changed beyond 15K nodes. They're not here now, but... See Breezy still typing. There's another uh, aspect of, of the architecture of the network that I think has not been well addressed, uh, it, which is that the validation pool has remained fairly stagnant. Uh, there does not seem to be an increased bid, despite the fact that there was an increase in the rewards, a 500% increase, all things considered. Um, and What's more, node runners don't have an effective way to automate uh, distribution of validation rewards in the way that they do of service rewards. So there are some like technical complexities uh, in place that that make that a little difficult to incentivize that behavior as well. Um, and that's something that I think really needs to be addressed, uh, especially at the current state of pocket. It just does not take a lot of pocket to do a full validation takeover. I don't think that the network is adequately secured against that with our current validation uh, architecture. I guess what we need to figure out is the proper incentives to get people to buy and stake more pocket. I mean, I would argue that the single best incentive mechanism that we have for that is shifting uh, pocket rewards in favor of validation and prompting a validator bid. 
a fierce auction and a validation pool would be a, a pretty significant token sink and increasing the number of validators in the pool, uh, which we've been at way higher than now, so it wouldn't hurt to bump that number a little bit, um, would end up eating a significantly higher amount of, of total pocket from a, a staked pocket perspective, constraining circulating supply. Um, doing things like raising the minimum stake to 60K would, um, would move far in that direction. Um, but, you know, I've, I've got some ideas that I've jotted down. I'd be happy to share them with some additional folks. I don't want to go too deep into the weeds today since uh, it's only been a couple of people who've seen them. But um, I, I would be happy to share that out to anyone who wants to DM me and ask for it. Any other thoughts, questions, topics to discuss? Okay, well, it seems like we are uh, at the end then. So, and I will see every one of you again, and hopefully uh, you'll bring your friends, same time, same channel next week. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.